We're back on the table. Sadly, Baltimore's out, but the show must go on. We got Dwayne on the table tonight, and I am excited to have an OG, triple OG, one of the original Lit Tube members, Ross Roberts. Finally, your work schedule allowed you to get back on the camera. Welcome back. Good to be here. <laughs> so much energy. <laughs> yeah, we're great. But um, let's get down to business. Let's rip the band-aid off. Let's talk about the Ravens. Before we talk about that, let's just talk. Let's look back at the season. We went from virtually not having any prospects of being in the playoffs to what you got and saw Sunday. <sighs> Roller coaster, just like you said. Um, four and five quarterback change, head coach on the ropes mm -hmm. to a division champ. Yeah, I think I think we can we can be proud of what we built, but but we can be disappointed as well. And it's fair to be disappointed, but I you know me and Ross went to the game and it was it was an interesting dynamic to go to the game mm -hmm. and be around some of the energy. And we're going to talk about that. There's a lot to talk about. Trust me, but. You know, to go from, again, like you said, from virtually, I mean, I think before Lamar started at quarterback, we hadn't won a game since the weekend before I got married when we took on the Steelers. Yeah. So to go from that much suck to being pretty legit and knocking the Steelers off and getting the divisional title, which we haven't done in God knows how long, quite a few years, that, that's awesome to me. And I, I walked away from that game. I was like, okay, we can build on something. Oh, yeah. You know? But let's talk about Sunday. Who's to blame? Offensive line. Yeah. Thank you. When uh, when you play from behind and you are forced to pass the ball, mm -hmm. that offensive line cannot <sighs> pass block. Not at all. I um, mean, they had, they had moments, and you can see when they show replays, <laughs> that, set, that first pass to, to Crabtree. Look, Lamar had time in the pocket. He stood there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Counterpoint, that last fumble, the, after you see Ingram come in and drop it, who's chasing Ingram? Orlando Brown Jr. Yeah. is falling behind him with his arms stretched out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're just, and, go yeah and you, you honestly can't have success at quarterback when you have no line to protect. Now, thank God Lamar Jackson was in because if he wasn't, and it was Flacco, no disrespect to Flacco because, and we're going to, like I said, we're going to get to a lot of things, but – I got to say this. If Flacco had been in that game with the way the offensive line had been playing, that game would have been even worse. There wouldn't even been an inch of win coming close to winning in the fourth. No, no, we would have been blown out God knows by how much. Just if you remember correctly, his second touchdown to Crabtree, Lamar ran around for about 10 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. And then also he had the other one where he ran around around the 10 minutes and flicked it back to the middle to Kenneth Dixon, who got 20, 30 yards of the field. Flacco? He ain't moving like that. No. And, no, and, that, that. and you know, I remember at one point in the game, because like I said, the way the offense at a, whole, at a whole, you know, in general played was pretty shitty. I mean, it was complete trash. And I remember we're sitting there, and of course, but Flacco and blah, blah, blah. And you got to hear that shit for two hours. I'm like, come on, man. Shut up. Like, I get it. I get where people are coming from. And at one point, even I thought in my head, what do we have to lose? We're losing by 17 points. What do we have to lose? I remember I texted you about yeah, this. Yeah. You know, yeah. what do we have to lose? But then something happened where they decided to start playing offense finally. Yeah. And it was like, oh, shit, we could actually win this. Well, let's not act like the Chargers didn't switch up their coverage either. That's I mean, true. It was I mean, a prevent they, defense, which, right. if I'm not mistaken, though, prevent defense should have stopped a lot of the past plays. Well, yeah. Am I not mistaken? You put the prevent defense in, yes, Plus to stop got, it from scoring. Everyone said the prevent defense prevents you from winning. Yeah. <laughs> and sure, that's, that's, that's what it is. That's <laughs> it almost was better than from winning. On that last drive, they went back to they you know, went back was, to basics. Yeah, they, All of a sudden, they, they, when it was down yes, by six, yes. look who's look the pass rush showed yes, back up. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, again, that, that again that also shows the situation with the offensive line. There is a serious problem with the offensive line. We can work on on Lamar Jackson all offseason, and I think you want to go a little deep into that. So tell us what are your thoughts. Let's see here. Lamar Jackson, at that game time, was 21 years old. He's a child. The youngest quarterback to start a playoff game. And all that offseason before that, all he was doing was working towards the, dra the combine to run faster, uh -huh. to throw the passes they were going to have him throw. 
almost 31 out of 32 teams were like, you should be a wide receiver. Why don't you try this? Ravens were like, we know you can throw. You're not everyone wins a Heisman by just running the ball as a quarterback. Yeah. Tebow maybe, but even then he threw. Yeah. He's learning an NFL offense. Normally, rookies come in, if they're not planning on start week one, like Darnold, Allen, all them did, they're just learning a playbook. Not only did he have to do that, he had his own plays that he was running mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. during the season. Yeah. So he had that to learn along with the rest of the playbook. He's he, continuity. I mean, we looked forward to next year. Mm-hmm. I mean, hopefully Marty can 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 work with him some more. I know he's going to work with the receivers in the off season. Yeah. He's going to get better. Yeah. And that then, next day he turned twenty two. So yeah. He's, yeah. We yeah. know Crabtree's back next year. We know Sneed's back. So that's at least two wide receivers there. Has his two tight ends. Mm-hmm. Whether some of these fair weather fans like it or not, he's our quarterback of the future. I yeah, mean, and I, I think that, you know, that's that's the simply put thing, and that's why at the end of the day, I'm 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 hopeful. Because again, you have a high smoke. You have mm-hmm. a kid. I don't know how many people watch college football, but when he was in college, he did the damn thing. That's why he was drafted in the first round. Yeah. Because he is a quarterback. Yes, his throws may not look amazing. If you don't, if I'm not mistaken, Philip Rivers has a horrible delivery. Horrible. If I'm not mistaken, by the way, of the plays that were called, most of them were run plays or pass plays that were destroyed by the O line, where he just had to run. And when he does run, he's picking up twenty yards easily. You can't yeah. catch him. No. So, again, I look at it like this. Why there are people like, well, he can't throw. Well, how the fuck do you expect him to throw when he has like two seconds to make a throw? Again, he is a rookie. He's a kid that's never been in a game this big. No. I don't care what games you played in college. There's no game bigger than the NFL playoffs in an NFL stadium. So, again, you have a 21-year-old kid in a game where he's never played before. He only has about two seconds to figure out where he's going to throw. He's still learning the playbook. Let's not Give him a break. Let's not forget. <laughs> Evan wanted Flacco. Last time I checked, Flacco got us to a four and five record. Yes. Without Lamar Jackson, who went six and one. And if you look at that Kansas City game, there's another thing to point out. When the Ravens win, it always seems to be look at their defense. Look at it. Oh. Every time they lose, it's their quarterback. Uh-huh. That Kansas City game, we had them at fourth and nine winning. Yep. They got picked up that. We had them fourth and goal, still winning. They picked up that. Mm-hmm. It's called not being able to close the deal. And yeah. even, even Sunday, not just offensive line. Evan Romney, I was saying when they came out, they were booing the offense. I was like, yeah, they're, they're the only reason. The guy next was like, oh, yeah. I was like, the special teams was giving up returns. Like, well, they have two blocks. Like, yeah, they figured out the second half. Yeah. The only unit that stayed consistent the whole game was the defense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Without them, it would have been worse because over half their drives in the first half were on our side yeah. of the 50. Yeah. yeah. I mean – Lucky to give up those those field goals. Yeah, there, yeah. And, there were, and like I said, there were a lot of a lot of you know mistakes that were made. But here's the thing, and this is the thing that should probably end all these damn arguments at least until next year, which I know they're not. Nope. I know there are going to be people in the comments sections that are just going to bitch and complain like, oh, we can't throw, oh this, oh that. Listen, we haven't been to the playoffs since 2014. I was what 25? You were 24. We haven't been to the playoffs in like four years, man. Like, be happy. Oh, we made it to the playoffs. Yeah, we're not we're the divisional out. champions. The, the upside is, is uh, great. We lost. We lost to a team that is undefeated on the road. I, Their one loss was yeah. in L.A. to the Rams. Again, the Ravens fans. I believe we are spoiled as fans because I feel like at least city. majority we're a winning city when it comes to football. We won't talk about baseball. That's we got. We got a long time to talk about that. But at least in football, we've been consistently good. In the last, we've been around 20, in the last 25 years, I don't know how many years we've been around. It's been up. 96? Yeah, it's uh, eh, quick maths. Anyways, 22, 25, whatever. Um, We've won two Super Bowls. Most Eagles, teams. Eagles just got their first. Eagles just got their first Super Bowl, and they were probably one of the original Super Bowl teams. Redskins haven't done shit since VHS. We're spoiled. And let's not talk about Dallas, though. Dallas is in the playoffs still, so I'll give them credit on that. But nonetheless, the Ravens, ex- Ravens fans expect good things. So it's confusing to me. Again, I understand to get here and then to be knocked out so early. Yes, it's disappointing. But fine, rejoice in the fact that we got here. Mm-hmm. But. 
Like I said, the future is there. The future is there. The future we is there. We have bright. those tight ends. Jeez. Hurst finally started doing something. Mark Andrews, Andrews already was doing yeah. stuff. Give yeah. Lamar an offseason where he's going to be able to work out with Crabtree and Snead. Mm. That was one of Flacco's always problems. They said he never had receivers. Mm. Here's the difference. Like you said, Lamar is a baby. He's 22. What else does he have to do? Yeah. He's probably been watching film already. Probably watching film. I mean, and they, they tell you, you know, the coaches always talk about his work ethic. You know, he puts the extra hours in the weight room. He's putting the extra hours with the team. Yeah. If you don't so, have that work, we would not have lost by six points. Exactly. Again. Uh, and, and, and if we really want to go there, I think that's something that Flacco lacked. I think that, that work ethic, you know, I don't know if it was his, his ten kids he's got at home. Yeah, but, right. but I mean, the, the extra work that, that the hungry Lamar seems to put in is more so than the paid Joe. Yeah. So, yeah. I think we, you know, I think I think the future's bright. But speaking of Joe Flacco, let's let's not act like, you know, we're grateful for Joe. We are grateful for Joe. We're not Joe Flacco haters. No. You know, and I'll be the first to tell you, my wife is one of Joe Flacco's biggest fans. And even she admits, you know, maybe it is time. Here's the thing. When we were on the light rail home from the game, of course, the, you know, the report came out, they are going to shop Joe Flacco. We all expected it. I think we... I think we knew if he if we went to the playoffs, yeah. it was a it was a done deal. I don't even think we had to do that. You just can't pay a backup twenty million dollars at take, all. You take a quarterback in the first round. Flagler hasn't taken us to the playoffs in the past three years. Something had to change. Yeah. So we're we we've we've talked about this, and now it's time to get serious because the playoffs are thinning out. Now we're at that point in the year where you virtually can start to predict who's going to the Super Bowl, who may even win the Super Bowl. Where off-season moves, teams might pick. Where's Joe Flacco going exactly? I don't know, but I know he's not wearing purple and black next year. I don't I'll, think they cut him, but I think they trade him. If they trade him, that changes the teams. If they cut him, I don't think he's leaving the DMV. You don't uh, think yeah, so? I was going to say Washington. Yeah, if they, especially if we cut him, I don't think he has to move far. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, and I wonder if it's one of those situations because of what he's done for Baltimore. You know, he even said, you know, the best 11 years, he couldn't have picked a better city. No. And, okay. you know, let's be honest here. Again, this shows Baltimore fans. They hated Joe. <laughs> let's not act like like the fan base probably wasn't at the stadium yeah. booing Joe Flacco. Yeah. Not last year, the year before, in the last four years. Yeah, that's but, true. again, where does he go? I think they give him his choice. You might be on to something. I mean, the Redskins are... Like they lost two quarterbacks this year. Alex Smith is done. He's, he's done. He's retired. I, I I predict Alex Smith retires. Honestly, I, I, I was gonna not not to cut you off, but but Jacksonville. That's, Jacksonville's another Jacksonville. choice. Yeah, I, I, I think I've heard that too. I think Miami's Miami. safe with Tannehill. Honestly, that that's my opinion. It'll be on depending on who the coach is. Yeah, depending on who the coach is, I think Tannehill stays at least this year if they don't end up drafting a quarterback yeah, in a yeah. draft. But I think the Redskins or and the Jaguars are a good team for a bridge quarterback like Joe Flacco. But number five is going elsewhere, maybe, in my opinion. Maybe he retires. I don't think Joe's going to retire. I, mean, I don't. I, I honestly, when now when it comes to retiring, though, and that goes on to our next player I wanted to talk about, Eric Weddle, who is in a situation where at least right now, I'm kind of glad Tuesday what he night. Said. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy. I'm either he's going there. off into the sunset, he's, or I'm going to play another, game. another team. I'm either playing here, or I'm done. I, I love that. I, I I like it. Yeah, but but I have I have problems with him being on this team next year. I think I, I think a few people do. I <laughs> just think I I think he he was the quarterback of the defense last year. Mm-hmm. But man, he he's just he has like he is not the fastest guy out there. He's lost. Yeah. He's lost a little bit. He's a little older. Oh yeah. I'd, I'd like to see him in a mentor role. Maybe not playing all the snaps mm-hmm. if yeah. he comes back. But but I just towards yeah. the end of the season, I see he he looked like he was missing a step. In my opinion, I think it's time to find Ed Reed 2.0. Honestly, I think in the draft we should draft. We should try to find somebody that you know we can build up another Ed Reed, another leader on that defense. Because like I said, Ed Eric Weddle. It was a leader out on that defense. He was a yeah. solid piece. piece. There's, we, a, there's a reason he got the green stick when Mosley was out those few games uh-huh. and kept it a few games afterwards. And when you think about the position he's playing, who was at it before? I mean, he held it down yeah. as much as he could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
These players had to come in and players had to read, essentially. And those uh, are um, humongous cleats to fill. Yeah. They were yeah. showing clips earlier, I think a week or so ago, because I think he was a Hall of Fame finalist. Mm-hmm. When the Ravens defense picked the ball off, they'd be like, huh? huh? Where's Ed? Where's Ed? I need a tall end. What other team did you see that? Normally, yeah. a lineman gets the ball, they're like, I'm going to run the ball. No. We had our cornerbacks pick the ball off, turn around, be like, huh? Where's Ed? <laughs> Hey, no one does that. He was a return special. For many team. years, our defense was our offense. Yes. So. That, also an amazing treat for those over there. I'm not sure how it was televised, but Ed Reed out there is an honorary captain. And then, out of nowhere, Ray Lewis comes out. I mean, come on. That, that was amazing. That was amazing. Todd Heap was there. There was actually a picture on Ed Reed's Instagram of him, Ray Lewis, and Todd Heap. And it and was Phelps just... Was there. Huh? And Michael Phelps, Phelps was there. Yeah, Phelps was in the pictures, too. Actually... I stood in line in White Marsh Mall. My leg damn near went to sleep waiting for an autograph of Todd Heap and Dennis Pitta. I mean, it was just an amazing weekend to be a Ravens fan, even though we came up short. I'm proud of my team. Yeah. I'm excited for 2019. We got a long off season. Get ready for the combine. Get ready for the combine. There's a lot and of prospects at receiver that we could pick up. And think, huh? this is going to be a slightly different look off season because mm-hmm. who's running the helm? Yeah. yeah. We do not have as great as Ozzy is. I would take nothing from him. His first two picks are in the Hall of Fame. He's going to have another one going to the Hall of Fame this Super Bowl Sunday when Ed Reed gets it. Okay. Yep. He's, I mean, he got us Flacco. He got us Lamar. Yeah. He, but his philosophy was always somewhat questionable, especially recently. Yeah. With not wanting to pay this, not do it. Where have the cost of now running it? That's why when reports started coming out in midseason, Le'Veon Bell, Ravens were one of the top teams that people were saying. And I was normally I was like, no, but I was like, wait a minute. We got the cost is running this. Yeah. And I don't see it happening. Because especially if you want to try Gus, because clearly Gus showed us something. Yeah. But I don't know let's if not he's forget long term. Alex yeah. Collins did this to us a year before. Yeah. We were talking about that, yeah. I would love okay. just imagine him Lamar standing next to Le'Veon Bell. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Even if he makes a wrong read and gives it to him, Bell could still make something out of that. And for the first off season in a while, we're gonna have some caps cap room once we get rid of Joe and once we get mm-hmm. rid of some of these older players. We cut some of that dead money. We're we're gonna have some cap space for the first time in a couple yeah. of years. So do they make a splash in free agency, which is not something we've done? No, we haven't. Yeah. I mean, up until actually, up until this year, we never really picked up any names that even sparked my excitement. When we got yeah, Willie Sneed, I was excited. When we got John Brown, I was like, wow, okay, let's do yeah, it. I mean, years before, John Brown man, didn't amount to much. We but. always, I mean, we got. Well, we get the over he, the hill. <laughs> John, John, John Brown, he's he's an interesting person to look at. Mm-hmm. He was so good with Flacco because he could throw it deep. But yeah. once we stopped having a run game, our play action went away. Mm-hmm. So that went away. I know he signed a one-year deal. He said he's not signing a one-year deal again. He didn't rule out not coming back to Baltimore. I don't see it happening. He's going to probably want to go with a quarterback. Oh, yeah. yeah. But just think if he did come here and Lamar did get to the throwing and then play action. I think, honestly, my opinion, if, if they can get, you know, they can get Lamar passing, I say John Brown, give it a chance. See what happens. Or yeah. if not, whatever. Let's pick up on these young guns out of the – out of the um. Out of the combine, either it could turn into a Juju Smith or it could turn into a Perryman. But yeah. you, you just never know, honestly. And yeah, nor- normally, going into the past few drafts, I said, we need to get skill player. We need to skill player. We need linemen. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. That's what we I'm going to say. This, line, this draft needs to be the big, ugly, up-front, yeah. offensive line. Let's, let's stack it up strong. We don't even need defensive linemen. We got Pierce. We got Williams. Yep. There are a few other pieces that might not be here next year as of now. Suggs, free agent. He never. He didn't say he was retiring, but he wants to finish career in Baltimore. Mosley is what contract. Yeah. They That's have what, to pay Mosley. He's a, if they, yeah, they don't play Mosley, then I. I have no faith. <laughs> yeah, he's the one that I. He's the one of the ones I can see definitely back. Yeah, modern one that's also minor here is Brett Urban. Mm-hmm. We need him. I he, don't he's, want. He's, he's come on since he's, he's grown. Finally, yes, he's since grown. he's finally stayed healthy, he's come on. He's and then grown. obviously we got the. Yeah, and I mean, they also uh, one thing I read earlier today is Jimmy Smith could be one of those cap casualties to try to free up some space I, 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 because be, we got Tavon and Marlon Humphrey now, and I'd I wouldn't be, be mad to, about I'd that. I'd be willing to pack his bags for him. Honestly, honestly. Jimmy yeah. Smith, 
as good as he was, you know, against the Browns, you know, as good as as he can be, it's very intermittent and it's very inconsistent. Yeah, he's been. Fr- I mean, he's yeah, had yeah. years where he's shut down people. He's, yeah, he's used to be the one we always put on Antonio Brown, and for most part was relatively quiet. Mm-hmm. This year was the most I've seen up, down, up, yeah, yeah. down. Yeah. It was like I was even saying the game. I was like, you're all missing, dissing Jimmy Smith. Literally a week ago, uh-huh. you were cheering because he had two interceptions. Yeah. Like I said, inconsistencies, you just don't know. But, again, 2019, the 2018 season is in the book for the Ravens. I think Brandon Carr might retire, too. That is also a possibility. Man, we have a very fun offseason, and get, and we're going to have yeah. coverage of it. Let's, this year. let's be honest. Last year, between, From last year to this year was an oddity. Mm-hmm. We had every starter come back. Yeah. That doesn't happen. That does. That never happens. We were also very injured last year, that, too. That, so. too. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully, you know, this offseason, we can get the pieces that we need. 2018's in the books. 20, 2019 has begun. Yeah. So, I mean, best to just stay tuned, see what happens. Obviously, we're going to have that update for you. But let's go around town and talk about some news elsewhere in the area. We'll start out first. Bowie to be the default home team as Baltimore hosts the CIAA basketball tournament in two years. The tournament is a a basketball tournament for historically black colleges. That's awesome. Something that I'm interested in going to because usually it's held in North Carolina. Yeah. All right. So Towson University football team comes in at number 20. In the final stats FCS poll and number 22 in the last America Football Coaches Association Coaches poll for 2018. This marks the first year since 2013 when Towson finishes in the top 25. I'm going to be honest. They got into the playoffs. They didn't do so hot. But, I mean, they, they do have Tom Flacco. Yeah. So, I mean. Good old Flacco. <laughs> <laughs> got a Flacco. Flacco's not leaving. We are still Flacco blessed. <laughs> All right, so we got UMBC women's basketball lost to Maine, forty-four to eighty-four. Good, good lord! Yeah, they just didn't show up <laughs> <laughs> over this weekend. While the men beat Maine sixty-one to fifty-two, and the swimming team ranked up one hundred and thirty-eight team points, beating Howard, who accumulated one hundred and fifteen. And apparently, that is how swimming is scored. I did not. Know I that. did not know that either. I, I saw was it. on it. I was on you a swim team, team, and I did not know that's how they did scores. I just swim. Not you that good at that. I fair. just did it to do something. <laughs> Stevenson women's basketball beat Stockton 72-54 to over the weekend. And Stevenson's men's soccer to host a spring ID clinic April 6th. You Stevenson, you, you, you Do I look like a fucking soccer player? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, maybe about... 15 years ago, but no. The Stevenson University men's basketball team scored the final eight points of the game against John Jay, but its late push fell short by a 77-76 to final Saturday afternoon in non-conference action at Owens Mills Gymnasium. Really nice stadium, actually, by the way. I, I, go, Stevenson. I did not know there was college named John Jay. <laughs> and this week in Baltimore history, brought to you by the Baltimore Sign. I have a couple stories for you. All right, so it looks like on January 7, 2001, the Ravens upset the Tennessee Titans 24-10. to 10. Ah, the Ravens and Titans yep. rivalry. I love that. <laughs> that was a fun game. Um, awesome. A they, time. they advanced to the AFC Championship game. Anthony Mitchell returned a tipped field goal, uh, 90 yards for a touchdown, and Ray Lewis raced 50 yards with an interception for a score. And ripped out of Eddie George's hands. <laughs> still remember Good seeing old. that video. And we know you know it this year, I, and I'm excited. Because you know what it's leading up to. We all know. <laughs> Good old Raven. Festivus Maximus. Yeah. <laughs> all right. On January 7th, 1966, the Orioles named Harry Dalton as vice president one month earlier. As director of player personnel, Dalton engineered the trade that brought Cincinnati outfielder Frank Robinson to Baltimore. He's Huge. pretty good. He's yeah. got a, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got one of those yeah. statues out there at Camden Yards. Yeah. He's pretty good, you know. <laughs> one of the one of the good old Robinsons I played here. And yeah. happy birthday to George Talaferro, born on January eighth, nineteen twenty seven, the first black player drafted by the NFL and a quarterback for the Colts in nineteen fifty three. He died actually last October. He scored four touchdowns for the nineteen fifty three Colts, leading the fledging team in total yards, one thousand three hundred ninety eight yards. Played for, he, of course, played for the Colts from 1953 to 1954. A little bit of history there. 
That was awesome. Did not obviously, know Baltimore that. Colts. Obviously, Baltimore Colts. I mean, what a time. But that does it for our show. We will be keeping you updated. Again, like I said, this show doesn't stop just because the ratings are over. We got basketball. We got baseball. We got college lacrosse coming and, of course, hockey. And, again, uh, amazing offseason ahead for the Raven. So don't forget to stay tuned whether you're watching on thisislit2.com. And these fun people. <laughs> <laughs> whether you're watching on thisislit2.com or YouTube. We're here. And thank you, Roth, for joining back on set. I'm glad to have my boy back. Take care and stay tuned.